Hi folks, in this lesson we're going to see how we can work with sliders and the slide toggle component. We'll start out with the slider component, but first of all, let's just import the relevant material modules for both the slider and the slide toggle component into our own app module. Great, okay, so let's start out with a slider. This component is another very common UI component and is used to enable the visitor to easily select a value from a predefined range of values. Let's add one to our forms component. The slider can be used without any additional configuration at all. By default, the slider is horizontal and has the minimum value set to 0, the maximum value set to 100, and the step value set to 1. So this means that we can move the thumb along the track in increments of 1. It's fully keyboard accessible as well, and we can use the arrow keys to move the thumb along the track. Let's take a look in the browser now. We can configure the min, max, and step values using configurable input properties. So now the slider will have an initial value of zero, but the max will only be 50, and the slider will move in increments of 5 due to the step property value. One thing you'll notice is that we can click on the track to select the nearest step value, and the thumb will then jump to that point, but we cannot drag the thumb along the track. For this, we'll need to install the gesture library, Hammer.js. Let's do it now via npm. Now we need to import Hammer.js into our app. Instead of using the app module like we have been so far, we're going to use the main.ts file. The reason why we use main.ts instead of the app module is because this framework is not an Angular module. So it doesn't need to be imported and consumed by the app in the same way that other Angular modules do. It just needs to be available to the app, and so we can import it here in main.ts. So that's all we need to do. Let's go back to the slider component now. And we should now find that we can drag the thumb along the track using the mouse. Perfect. We can add tick marks to the slider, and to do that, we use the tick interval setting. So you can see the ticks now when we hover. A setting of one for the tick interval property means that a tick will be added at every interval. The tick marks aren't labeled, and as soon as the slider loses focus, they will no longer be displayed. This makes it difficult for the user to know what value has actually been selected. We could fix this by adding labels before and after the slider to show the minimum and maximum values, but a better way is to configure the thumb to display the selected value, and this is done using the thumb label directive. So now as we move the thumb along the track, we get this label that shows us what value is actually selected. As soon as the slider loses focus, the label disappears. 
If we want to react to the slider being interacted with, there are two output events that we can make use of, change and input. The input event is fired every time the slider thumb moves, so it can fire quite frequently. We can also use the change event, which is triggered only when the actual value of the slider changes, so it's much less intense. And let's just log the event that gets passed out to the console. So we get this mat slider change event in the console here now. We get a value property to tell us what the newly selected value is. And we also get an instance of the slider element itself. So the slider component is pretty straightforward to use and configure. Let's move on now to look at the slide toggle component. Let's add one of these to the forms component also. This type of slider represents a binary on or off state, which we can toggle between. It should be instantly familiar to anyone with a mobile device. This is also a very simple component with a very small API. This component maps to a checkbox and the text we add inside the mat-slide-toggle becomes the label for this checkbox. So the component is already accessible. We also don't need to provide any configuration at all. The component works completely out of the box. There are a few configurable properties that we can use if we need to, however. If we want the toggle to be selected by default, we can set the checked property. And now we can see that the slide toggle is selected by default. We can also change the position of the label if we want to. We use the label position input property to do this. Valid values for this are before or after, with after being set as the default. Back in the browser now, we can see the label appears before the slide toggle. Probably the most common thing that we'll want to do is react to the state of the slide toggle changing. Again, we can hook into the change event to handle that. And again, let's just log it out to the console. So this time we get a mat slide toggle change event. And again, we get an instance of the slide toggle that triggered the event and the checked property shows us the new value. So in this lesson, we learned about two distinct components, the slider and slide toggle components. These are both very simple elements with relatively small APIs, and both of which can be used without providing any configuration whatsoever. We saw that the slider allows us to easily configure the min, max, and step properties of the component to control the range of values that it can accept. We also saw how to add tick marks and show the selected value in a thumb label using the tick interval and thumb label properties. We then moved on to take a quick look at the slide toggle component, which gives us an attractive way to present an on off binary choice. And we saw how to control whether or not it is selected by default and how to respond to changes in its state. Thanks for watching.